Oh God, it is, it is so good to be with your people. It is so good to remember that we are here not because of who we are, but we are here because of who you are. And how your love and grace continues to guide and lead each and every one of us so that we may be transformed, so that we may live as your disciples. So, Lord, we pray that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart here be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. So, uh, if you got one last week, I hope you have this posted up somewhere in your house. I got a couple of pictures from some people who uh, showed me that they, they put it up in their bathroom. Uh, this is a card that says, Jesus, I belong to you. We have more of these here. I believe they are back uh, in this entryway area sitting on the table. If you don't have one, please take it because this, is, this helps remind us who, who we are and whose we are. It helps remind us that, that even when time gets difficult, when time gets rough, we belong to Jesus, and Jesus will never, ever let us, let us go. Because unfortunately, sometimes we, we let him go. And, and when we realize that, we are so thankful that he allows us and, and he beckons us to come back into his loving embrace. And we started that because, again, we're looking at our, at our mission and our vision, something that came, we came up with in, in 2017, a part of the uh, Healthy Church Initiative to help us to, to find ways to focus in, in, into how we do life and ministry together. So I want to, again, we'll, we'll do this for the next few weeks, just to say our, our mission and our vision, just to helpfully kind of uh, to internalize that into our lives, into our hearts, so we know what it is that we're about. So we have the, the mission up here, so I invite you to say that with me. Would you please join me? Our mission is making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. See, some people think that the, the part of what the church is to do is to transform the world, and that's not it. That's not our task to transform the world. That, that is what God does. Our task is to make disciples. That is what we, as a church, are called to do. And here's the great byproduct of us making disciples. It's going to transform the world. When we realize that the task that we are to do is just to make disciples, God will do the transforming of the world around us, and we celebrate that, and we live into that. And my friends, that is just great news, because I really don't want that up to me, because I know I'll mess it up, and I'll mess it up real good. So, we came up with a, a vision of how we as Roy City First United Methodist Church will, will be actively doing the mission of the church. And our vision is this. Would you join me? Be gods. You belong here. Worshiping together, serving with heart, and growing in faith. I, I love this vision, this vision that, that, that you came up with, that, that you affirmed and voted on, because it gives us the opportunity to say this, this is what we are about. This is what anybody who walks in our door, anybody who drives by, hopefully they will see and feel that mission and that vision, because that is who we are set apart as, as a church. So it, instead of just, just trying to go by and, and, and talk about each one of these different parts of, a vision, of, our, of our vision, I wanted to do it a little differently. And the way that I wanted to do it was to look at it through what's called the means of grace. Now, if you have been a part of the Walk to Emmaus community, you, you know what means of grace are, but sometimes it's, it's good to be reminded, and there's a lot of us who haven't done the Walk to Emmaus, and it's good to know exactly what the means of grace are. Now, it, it sounds like it's something that's, um, that can be tricky or something that you really have to work hard on, but it really isn't. What, what, what a means of grace is, it, it's a channel 
of, of God's love for those who are always open and, and seeking a relationship with God. That, that's basically all it is. It, it is a channel of God's love that is open for anyone who is seeking a deeper and stronger relationship with a God who loves and cares for you already. And, and a means of grace can be the most simplest things in the world. Like one of the means of grace that I participate, that I do every morning uh, before, I, when, I, when I get into the office here, I, I, I shut my door and I have a, a little timer that I set for, for five minutes. A, and I sit in one of my little comfy chairs that I have uh, tucked away in the, in the corner of my office, and I sit there and, and I, just, I just breathe. A, and I, I allow that means of grace to be a time where I open myself up to, to who God is a, and allow God and, and give him the day before I do anything, before I look at email, before I even go to my mailbox, before I call anyone, I, I do that because I know I need God's strength to get through the day. And I want to make sure that I start each day with a relationship with God. Now, we're going to focus on five different means of grace over the next five weeks because these are called instituted means of grace. So what that means are that these means of grace, I think last week I said they were all instituted by, uh, by Jesus Christ, and, and, so, and Jesus did most of these, but they were all instituted or mentioned in the New Testament. So, so these are the, the means of grace that the church from all the way from, from when Jesus what was on this earth that they practiced together. And those means of grace are these listed. The Lord's Supper, prayer, searching the scripture, fasting. Yes, we're going to talk about fasting. And also Christian conferencing. These means of grace are ways for us as followers of Jesus Christ to open our hearts and our lives to have God pour into us so that we may be Christ for the world around us. Now, the purpose of these means of grace, are, 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 they're not empty rituals. It, it, it's so easy to allow the means of grace to be something that you do over and over and over again. I have to watch myself even when I get into the office on, on, in the mornings and I do my five minutes of silence because there are times where that just becomes, okay, Check that off my list so I'm good, and I have to stop and breathe, and sometimes I go longer than five minutes because I realize my focus had not been on, on God. My focus was on just getting it done, and sometimes that is a danger of the means of grace. We focus on how can we get it done, what is the most efficient and, and best way to do that, and it's not about that. It's about transformation. Each one of these means of grace are ways for us to be transformed into Christ-likeness and, and have the focus and, and have the idea be, how can I be more like Jesus Christ? Well, well what is it that I can do in my life that, that, that can be more Christ-like for those around me? So with today being Communion Sunday, we're going to start with that particular means of grace and how it helps to inform the vision of our church. Our scripture for this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 26. And I invite you, if you have your Bibles, to follow along or we'll have the words printed on the screen for you to follow along as well. Hear the word of the Lord. Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until 
he comes. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So what, what I, when I take a look at this passage, the, uh, the very first thing that I see is that Paul is very quick to remind us that he received this gift. He, he says there right at the very beginning, for I have received from the Lord what I passed on to you. He, he's reminding us that, that this whole communion thing, it isn't something that, that, that he made up. Now, I know in the Gospels, we, we, we see a couple of places where, where Jesus is instituting the, the Lord's Supper, but, but this scripture in, in, in 1 Corinthians was written down before the Gospels were written down. So, so this is the first writing of what we call the words of institution, the, the words that, that I say when I'm, I'm behind the table as we prepare to receive the bread and the cup. So Paul wanted his listeners to know that, that this isn't something that he made up. This isn't something that, that, that he wanted his people to do just because he thought it was a good idea. He wanted to let them know that, that this was something that was given. This was a gift given from Jesus Christ, not just to his disciples, not, not to Paul, not to the early church, but, but to the church that goes on and on and on, that, that, that we are able to, to receive right here and right now. And, and the reason why it is a gift, because it helps us see exactly what our identity is and our true identity is that we are sinful people in the need of God's grace. A and when we come to this table, we, we surrender all that we have and, and all that we are and realize that, that this sacrament is a gift for each and every one of us. In other words, it's another way that when we come to the table and we participate in this meal, we are saying, Jesus I belong to you. Or in other words, as we have in our vision, be God's. When we come to this table, we are stating our identity that we belong to God. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful thing to realize that, that when we outstretch our hands and we receive the bread and, and the juice together, we are saying, I am taking this because I belong to Jesus. And, and Jesus is who I am. No other identity in the world can, can match that. No other identity in the world can give us the, the feeling and the strength and, and the love that we have except the identity that we belong to Christ. That's, that's why we have an open table. That, that's why anyone and everyone who comes to worship can come and receive the gifts of bread and cup because it is a gift from God, and God will use that gift to change people's lives. I, I've seen that. I, I've seen how God has used communion to change people's lives and to make them realize how a life with Christ is better than any other life that is out there at all. So what about the rest of our vision? How, how does Holy Communion help us to see our vision? Well, the first one, obvious, worshiping together. We, we do this in worship. That, that, that's the, the main time that we do communion. Now, we have worship experience in other places. One of the things that blesses me is when I have the opportunity to go on a, a mission trip with youth, and, and then we gather and we have communion together in the midst of, of, of that mission trip. Because, again, it reminds us that even we, if we are, are, are far away and we're not in this building, communion still connects us. Communion still helps us see how, how we worship together a, a, as one body. A, and that worship is about God. 
it, it's not about us. I think as a pastor, one of the funniest things, and I may be stepping into a beehive here, but I'm going to go ahead and step in it anyway, is one of the biggest controversies that we have about bread. You all know that that can be one of the biggest controversies around communion, whatever kind of bread you use. You know, I, I, and I, I've said some not so nice things to people, and, and I've apologized for them whenever people have made comments uh, about, about communion, especially the communion that we're doing right now with the little fellowship cups. But it doesn't matter what kind of bread you use or, or what kind of, uh, whether you're using grape juice or, or, or wine, it, it reminds us what, what Jesus had done and, and how Jesus gathered his people together and gathers us together. And, and when we start focusing on, on bread or, 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 or wine or, or juice, then it takes away what it is really about. We make it about us instead of really allowing our worship to be about God. The second part of our vision, serving with heart. When we take communion, it opens our eyes to the hurting world around us. It, it opens our eyes so that we can see where God is calling us to go next. Henry Nowen, a theologian, he had an image of the church through communion where he said this, that the church, that we, we are taken, we are blessed, we are broken, and we are given. Let me say that again. We are taken, we are blessed, we are broken, and we are given. We, we, we are taken, we, we are taken away from the, the sinful desires that we have in our world and, and know that we are our Christ. We, we are blessed, knowing that, that when we partake of the bread and the cup, it, it, it blesses us, it fills us, and then it shows us where we are broken, and then we freely give of ourselves to our neighbors. I love how we serve as a church. And I've missed how we have not been able to serve this past year like we've served in the past. But I am thankful for a great and glorious God who will give us the opportunities to serve once again and to serve in a mighty way that allows all honor and glory and power to be given to him who gives us the abilities to serve one another. That's why, that's why we, we, we share these lists of, of ways to serve. We, we share these lists because it's not that we want to say that we have so many people being a part of different ministries, but we want you to see how you can get connected and do ministry in a way that allows you to live out the communion that we have with God. And if you see something on that list that, that doesn't speak to your gifting, well, God will graciously give you a way to serve so that you can be hands, Christ's hands and feet that is taken and blessed and broken and given. And then finally, we, we look at how we grow in our faith. Communion is about growing in our faith, and it's about transformation. It's not something we walk through the motions and we blindly go through. It is something that we take seriously because we know that it's life-changing. We know that, that God's real presence, the presence of Jesus Christ, is there in the midst of the bread and the cup. And, and when you come forward, you are receiving that, transformation, that transformational power of God within your life. Growing in faith is all about obedience. Now, that's a dangerous word. It can be a scary word for some because when some people think of obedience, they, they think it can, be, it, it can be used for those in power to oppress and to subjugate others. But my friends, Christ does not oppress and Christ does not subjugate others. But, but, but the word obedience 
uh, comes from the Latin uh, from the Latin word that means listening that leads to action. When we grow in our faith, it's not so that we can pile up more knowledge into our brains so that we can be smarter than the person next to us, but it should always spur us into action. It should always spur us into a way so that we can live out growing in faith, serving with heart, worshiping together, and most importantly, just knowing that we belong to Jesus. Today, actually last night, I want to thank my staff for their, their willingness to, to go with me last night. Uh, I texted them and said, you know, I, I, I don't want to pass out the communion cups at the door this week. Um, I, I, I'm tired of that. And I'm, I'm tired of that because, as Paul said, communion is about receiving. It's about coming and, and opening your hands and receiving the bread and the cup. And we'll be doing that together with, with the little cups that we have. But I, I want you, as you come forward, if you're able to come forward, to, to receive and say, God, I want the power of this communion to transform my life so that I may be holy and truly yours. So that all that I do is, is in worship for you. So all that I do is so that I may serve you and your people. And I may continue to grow in my faith because I know I don't have it all figured out. I know that I probably will never have it all figured out. But what I do have figured out is that I want to grow and be more like Christ in my life. So others may experience that love and grace as well. Let us pray. Oh God, as we prepare to receive this gift of bread and cup, we ask that you open our hearts, open our minds to receive this gift of bread and cup. Allow it to, to, to transform our lives into this holy mystery that we can experience who you are and whose we are. So, Lord, we lift this time of communion together up in the name of the one who loves us and cares for us, Jesus our Lord. Amen. <laughs>